It seemed like I had an extra gear. I take it for pretty much anything. It was a subtle difference, but a very noticeable difference. I felt hyper-focused. It helped me be present. I'm able to recall everything so much faster. I'm able to choose words that more encapsulate my thoughts. It will help with your creativity. A lot more relaxed, a lot more calm. At the end of the day, I, I still feel like I can go a whole nother day. I've been way more productive. I've just been able to get so much more stuff done. It does stuff. I love it. It does not get better than this. <laughs> Dude, I get this 10 thumbs up. Alpha Brain, stop killing yourself and be a savage like your Uncle Joey. Welcome back to the Final Shot Podcast. Today, my guest is one of the best boxers we have in Canada. He's got a professional record of 25 and 1. He's going to be fighting September 11th. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon Brewer. How's it going, my friend? Good, man. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Finally, I got you on. We, I wanted to do this a couple years ago, and you, you kind of fell off the radar a little bit, and then you came back storming back. And you got on to zone, which was awesome. And it's a fantastic opportunity for a Canadian guy to, to get some exposure like that. We'll talk about that fight in a little bit. But uh, September 11th, big fight. Big fight. Uh, you know, I think it's a uh, big respect to Jesse and his team. Uh, my team's excited. Uh, Dan and Three Lions, like, uh, I think Canada needs this fight. We need, yeah. uh, we need some excitement in Canadian boxing. And... Uh, I think Jesse and I are the two guys who can certainly give it to him. So, well, Dan hit me up and he said, "Hey, uh, Brandon Brewer is going to fight Jesse Wilcox." I said, "No, he's not. They're in different weight classes." And he's, "Yeah, they're going to fight." I was like, "Oh, okay. This is cool, man. This is a good fight." Yeah, he's he's going to come up a weight class for you. Is that how it's working? Hey, yeah, I mean, I, the thing is, like, I know Jesse, a, you know, a little bit. I don't know him well, but, uh, you know, we've spoke a few times. Uh, great conversations. You know, he's he's not a small guy. He's he's a, a very big, I mean, he's a big 154, you know, even. Uh, so, I know he walks around similar weight. So, I mean, it's, uh, he's coming up in weight. Um, but we're roughly the same size. He's a little taller. A little thinner. I'm a little shorter, a little stockier, maybe. I guess so. Because I referred to the the Wilcox brothers as kind of like the Diaz brothers of boxing, right? There, <laughs> but I didn't know there's five of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, big fan and all great boxers. You know, yeah. I think. Uh, you know, I think they've all been national champs as amateurs, and and I know Steve and Jesse. Uh, I don't think. Bradley hasn't been a Canadian champ as a as a pro yet, but he will be, I'm sure. Um, yeah, and the the youngest there, uh, Spencer, talented kid. He is. He's very very good. He's one of the best uh, amateurs in the country. So it'd be exciting to watch to see what he does too. So when they presented you with this fight, did you automatically say, "Okay, yeah, we're going"? Because to me. When guy, especially in boxing, not so much in uh, in MMA, but when guys are in, under the same promotional banner, they never fight. They never fight. Uh, you know, it's very rare. That's for sure, um, and it's unfortunate because it starves the fans of uh, of a lot of exciting fights. Because when they're under the same promotion, you see them side by side. Sometimes they're fighting right after each other. So it's like, I wonder if you know. And so when it happens, it's a uh, it's it's usually exciting because everybody's been waiting for it. Um, I said yes right away. I mean, I yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely. I just, I wanted to fight. Um, I think it's a good fight for the fans. I think it's a good fight for Jesse. I think it's a good fight for me. Um, and yeah, uh, it's a good fight for three lines. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, somebody's got to lose, but uh, it's the way it is. So, oh, but that's combat sports for you, Brandon. Somebody's always got to lose. We don't like draws. We don't like draws. No. Uh, draws so I, I, I'm excited. It, it's a very good fight. Jesse's tough, 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 tough. Um, what are the problems that you see that Jesse would present to you? Uh, you know, Je you know, Jesse's got he's got he's got decent footwork. Um, he's got a he's got a good jab. He's long. He's got a good jab. Um, 
an okay right hand. It's a nice straight right hand, you know, like he, uh, and he's got some experience. And, you know, when, when the going gets tough, Jesse digs in. You know, he does. He's a tough guy. He doesn't mind bleeding. He doesn't mind going to war uh, when things get hard. Uh, he's been dropped a couple of times. He gets up and he fights hard. So I don't expect it to be an easy fight. Uh, when I hurt him, I expect him to come back hard, you know, so. But we'll see, you know, like I, so am I. So. <laughs> what do you feel separates you from Jesse then? I'm still learning. Okay. I'm still getting better. I think that uh, a lot of people, people chalk experience, you know, up to it. And uh, Jesse has, I mean, you see the records. I have more fights as a pro. Um, not that many more. I think he's got, what, 19 and I've got 20. So, like, eight more fights. Mm -hmm. um, but I had nine amateur fights and he had, like, 200, mm -hmm. roughly. You know, so people try to chalk up. But I tell you, when, when you have 200 amateur fights, by the time you hit 50, 70, 100, you've kind of established who you are and what you can bring to the table. You know, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to add. Um, because if you don't know your body by the time you know, hundred fights, you know, then that's just what it is. So with me, I mean, I, I learned on the job my entire pro career. Mm. Um, and you know, you see me, I had a lot of different styles, you know, I sometimes going right hand, sometimes going left hand, sometimes fighting backwards. Sometimes was, I was, I was pressing, you know, I, you never know what you're going to get with me. Cause I was always trying new things. And unfortunately I couldn't always try it in the gym. I had to try it real time. So it was always about getting the rounds in, getting the experience. So um, I think that the experience that people say, I think it works against them. You know? uh, I've, I've had this conversation with multiple people on the show about amateur boxing compared to professional boxing. They're two different sports. Yeah. Hands down, two different sports. I think that you should have some amateur fights because then you, you kind of get to know what you're made of. You, you can take a shot. Absolutely. You can you can get into some rounds. Go on, win a golden gloves or a bronze gloves or a silver glove or whatever the fuck it is. Sorry. Um, I don't know how you feel about cussing, but I, I have a trucker mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, when you hit the professional ranks, that amateur style doesn't help you. It's, you know, it it it, it, it doesn't help you to an extent. You know, it, it, it obviously does because, like, a lot of the guys can make the mistakes as amateurs. Yeah. You know, before you get into the hurt business, let's say. Um, but the pro game is certainly different. Now, I tell you, like, I've sparred a lot of amateurs who are better than all of pro, a lot of pros. Yeah. You know, but but at the same time, too, I spar a lot of pros who you take those amateurs into deep waters. They're in trouble. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's then it becomes a fight. Uh, you know, uh, uh, on a lot of different levels as far as like, you know, it's more of a marathon and a sprint opposed to just the sprint. It's it's pain. It's pain to inspire a lot of these young amateurs because they're so busy, da, 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 you know. Uh, but, you you know, you, you pick your times on when to do that as a pro, I think. And, uh, yeah, two different games, though, 100%. Two different games. I've sparred amateur guys in the past and – it, it, you you put a two minute round on, you're in a little bit of trouble, because they're just gonna go 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 go. But you put yeah. six threes on, past the second round they start to slow down. The third round they get slower. Fourth round the hands drop. Fifth round, yeah, it, it's a different game. It's a game of endurance when it's when it's a professional fight. When it's an amateur fight, it's a sprint. Mm. sprint to the finish line land as many punches as you can get those points back them up get a count and get the heck out of there yeah yeah and i know they like they try to get away from it with you know they try to adapt more to pro style or they take the headgear off let's do the 10 point must system but when you don't extend the rounds yeah you're still going to get all that energy jammed into to three rounds and taking the headgear off like i can appreciate uh what they're trying to do but like these kids are just rocking socking robots yeah. and guys are getting cut and getting head butted and elbows it was just a mess oh, so this two minute round nonsense is my biggest argument with women's boxing too 
Uh, yeah, we were. I was just talking about that uh, with somebody the other day, and yeah, like I don't, I don't understand it. I do not understand it. I think it's, uh, I think it's nonsense. Three minutes. Let the girls go three minutes, and, and 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 I think that if you let them go three minutes, you're going to see more exciting fights, and then ultimately women's boxing is going to grow, and these girls can get paid more because it's, oh yeah, it is it's nonsense. You're going to get different stars that are going to that are going to blossom in a three minute round culture too, right? Like Clarissa Shields is fantastic in two minutes, but we've seen her in a five minute round for an MMA fight, and it was a problem. It was a problem, you know. Uh, I like the way she, like, she was, I, I enjoyed the interview after. Like, I like the, the competitiveness and the, the drive and the will to win. That's one thing, you know, uh, she's got, she wants to win, you know, and, and I didn't watch the full fight. I only watched the highlights, so okay. I can't. <laughs> is is yeah. what it is. When, when I see um, a female with 53 professional fights like Jelena Marjanovic fought all of her fights in two minute rounds. And then you, you see her and you go and she drops a belt because she fights a brawler that just goes. Yeah. Non- non-stop. And it's, yeah. It, the fact that Jelena could have like did what the, she, what she did. And it was in that many exciting fights and only in two minute rounds yeah. is mind boggling. Like if she were to have three minutes to work, man, I mean, she's still, I mean, I think like the the best, probably the best pro woman in Canada, easy. And one of the best in the world ever. Like, I mean, best she's got quite, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and she's a nice girl. She, I, yeah, I'm sure, you know, Jelena oh, yeah. fairly well. Yeah. yeah. She's um, super nice, man. I think she's the greatest female boxer of all time. Um, you just, you look at, at some of the, just the body bag knockouts that she's unleashed with oh. that left hook, man. Girls hit face planting on the ground, getting yeah. cut 60 stitches in her, whatever it was in her forehead and going on, knocking that, that chick out. Yeah. Come on. Oh man. That left hook was, I don't know who it was against. I mean, she obviously a lot, but there was one that I always see it on a highlight. Reels. Just always see it. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, they're they're saying Clarissa Shields is the greatest woman of all time, but you go through her resume and that's the American, you know. That's and, and I mean, you know, like the people don't want to give praise to the Canadians sometimes, and it's yeah. so it's you really gotta you really gotta fight for it. Um, and I think, yeah, how disappointing is that though? You you've you've got a lady that's held a WBC belt for the better part of a decade. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah it's or, unheard if, of. or if not a decade, and, and nobody's talking about her. Come on, yeah, no, absolutely. Like, they better put her in the damn boxing hall of fame, or I'm gonna go burn that thing down. <laughs> she should be there, obviously. I mean, she, I, and I think she will. She's got to be. She's yeah. got to be. She's got to be. Without a doubt. So you yeah. see what we just did here, Brandon, is we started talking about your fight and somehow we're arguing for two minute rounds in female boxing or three minute rounds. <laughs> yeah, we're pushing for it. Hopefully somebody can do something about it. Though. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be nice. Um, let's get back to your fight. You and Jesse Wilcox is one of the most interesting fights I think we could see at at 160 pounds. That's what the fight's at, right? 160? Yeah. Yeah, yeah 160. 160. So we've got... Two guys signed under the same banner. One guy's coming up a little bit. The other guy, Brandon and yourself, you, you've you fought on the international scene. You've got a ton of experience. You've fought some really good guys. But the biggest thing I think you have in your back pocket is you have a loss. I have a loss. Um, I like it. You know, yeah, I don't I, – I never chalked it up. Like, I, I never put a whole lot of weight on it. Um, when when i when i had the fight like it it didn't i was just uh it was a good fight it was exciting um uh, i learned a lot about myself i learned a lot about the game you know and it was just a blessing probably one of the best things to have in my career so you say you like it i like it too yeah. um i never got caught up too much on the undefeated thing um uh just because you know, it wasn't about that. It was about proving myself and becoming the best that I can possibly be. Yeah. And I know that you're not going to get that if you just keep fighting easy fights and keep that. It's kind of a delusion to a lot of guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. The the undefeated thing is is silly in boxing. Uh, yeah. 
Like, we don't really know what a guy's worth until he's hit the bottom. And and That's then right. like you felt what it like it's like to lose. It's not fun. Ah. Huh. <laughs> it's terrible. Man, I hate I hate losing more than I like winning. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> It is, yeah. So you know what it's like, and you don't want to feel that again. So you, the the option of you getting clipped is is going to be there. It, it might happen. But the option of you giving up and having that taste of defeat one more time, you're going to fight a little bit harder. Oh, man, I don't – like, there's no quit me <laughs> <laughs> at all. And that's one thing that I think, you know, like it's kind of – you know, you – I think n- nobody knew. Nobody knew anything about me. How are you going to learn anything about me when I got nine amateur fights and I went to Nashville like once and I had like five fights when I went? Like, like nobody, nobody knows. I don't put a whole lot of stuff out on the internet. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not much, you know. So people knew that w- the glimpses that they saw. Like I was a pretty good boxer. I was a pretty good boxer. Pretty good footwork. You know, you know, a little good head movement and you know, good jab and and. Nobody knew what my chin was like until I took the DeLuca fight on the zone. Yeah. And uh, I think that kind of raised some eyebrows because, like, I mean, the feedback that I got from the zone, like, I can go back anytime. It, you know, <laughs> it was exciting. It was, I think, it, you know, it was fight of the night on, on the show. And, uh, you know, both of us were, were cut. And there was no, you know, like, there was no quit. Like, I don't. Yeah, sure. The fight gets hard, but I mean, it's supposed to be, <laughs> you know. And it, it, in fact, for me, the harder it gets, the more I start like waking up, okay. you know. And and that's like, you know, that's that's something you don't know about yourself until you go through that, it's right? Very true, yeah. Like, you know. And so it was, it was, it was a good, it was a good learning experience and a good motivator, like you said, moving forward. Uh, nobody knows what it's like until you get clipped and you hear that buzz in your ear and you don't really know what the hell is going on, but you see homeboy over there coming to knock your block off. You're like, Oh shit. <laughs> Hands up. Yeah. It's a, it's a strange feeling. I, uh, yeah, it's a strange feeling. You hear that ringing, ringing, ringing the ear. John just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that disowned fight is that the hardest hitting guy you fought? Is that the guy that's probably hurt you the most? He didn't really hurt me. Okay, well you got that, a really good chin then, Brad. Like I, not like I was say I was prepared. It was a businessman getting in. I had been back in the gym for a couple months. It didn't have much sparring. I was in shape. Don't get me wrong. I don't get out of shape. Like I mean, you know, we went ten rounds. I never. It never got dropped and never like nothing. I so clearly I was in shape, but it was just the my reflexes weren't. I wasn't in the gym enough to keep my reflexes sharp, mm-hmm. and I hadn't had enough sparring with south paws to kind of like get the patterns down. Okay, you know to get to get the patterns down to to. So it was the left hand that kept yeah. hitting me, and the left hand straight left kept hitting me. I'm saying, you know, like. I, in my head, I was like, I started pressing. The, the longer the fight, the you know, towards the end of the fight, I started, kept started pressing, pressing, pressing because I knew I took his best shot and it wasn't, it didn't, it didn't hurt at all. Um, so no, Deluca was not the biggest puncher that I've been in there with. He was a physically, str- he looked like a big puncher, um, but it was more the just the shots that just kind of that they're just catching me clean because I wasn't, I wasn't quite. Pre- prepared that I needed to, uh, as prepared as I needed to be, uh, in order to be in there. I mean, he's ranked ninth in the world. So I was, uh, you know, you're going to get hit. <laughs> I've never fought a Southpaw, but I've sparred a lot of them and I always had fun with it. And I always did well against Southpaws, but I'm a cheap bastard too. And I'd step on their feet. I hook their hands. Do... <laughs> <laughs> it was fun because the foot's right there, yeah. right? You want to hit, you want to land a right hand, step on that thing. And yeah. It puts right there. So if you could like play with him a little bit, yeah. you know, take his mind off something. And I mean, the thing is now you've seen a lot of guys like you see, you see a lot more southpaws, but the right hand dominant. Yeah. You know, like uh, I mean, I mean, uh, Andrade. Andrade is actually Demetrius Andrade. Uh, 
he, he's actually right hand southpaw, long southpaw, um, but he's actually right handed. Uh, then you get guys like Cotto, right handed but left hand, but actually left hand dominant. De La Hoya too, yeah, uh, right handed but beautiful jab and beautiful left hook because he was left hand dominant. So it's like, yeah, there's there's southpaw, but like which hand am I, you know, playing to here? But uh, yeah, well. I know, Brandon, you're a really smart guy, and you're a businessman, so I know that you're wearing that hoodie for a reason. So tell me about the lab. I like that. Uh, the <laughs> lab, integrated training, yeah. So, like, I, uh, myself and a, a good friend of mine, we started a gym. Um, it's a 24-hour gym. Um, essentially, I needed a training facility, yeah. a personal training facility uh, where I could do business and, and work out in all day or, you know, whenever I, I need to. And uh, so we started a gym called the lab integrated training. Um, it's 24 hours. Uh, I have a real estate office in it. Okay. So, uh, and it's, 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 it's unique, man. It, it really is. Cause I mean, I think like, especially during this pandemic, like everybody's, uh, not only the mental health, but their physical health took, you know, took a toll. Like nobody could get to the gym. They couldn't get out. Uh, you know, we were kind of locked up a little bit. So the consciousness of, of, taking your physical health into into your own hands is a tough thing and i think the number one reason why a lot of people don't is they don't know what to do so what this gym does is we have an app that when you sign up you get all of your workouts sent to you uh, on your phone oh wow and they they can be customized and like say every, every every day or five days a week five days a week and uh, so, and if there's a movement in there, like uh, plank holds or something, you're like, I'm not sure what plank holds are. You just click on it and it shows you a tutorial video right on your phone. Wow. So it's, it's kind of like it takes that guesswork out of, uh, out of uh, you know, going to the gym. Sometimes people, they just don't know what to do, you know? And sometimes people who don't know, they just don't want to think about what to do. So it's, uh, it's kind of a new age, man. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's, you know, it's phase one right now, but uh, as we move forward, like uh, people can kind of our gym and, and, and do the workouts, but I want to be able to sell it to people anywhere in the world. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah and kind of do the same work that I've been doing all, uh, you know, all the time. So it's, uh, it's cool. You know, it's cool. Well, I was going to ask you, is there an app that you could get where like, let's say I'm in Guadalajara and I want to do Brandon Brewer's work- workout today and, and I got the gym. Can I log in, get the workout and go to work? Yes, you can. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. You can. Um, we haven't, we we're just still in the process. We're just still tweaking it. Uh, we just opened this gym probably, you know, four or five months ago. Uh, so it's in the 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 process so yeah you will will very soon soon to be so when you launch that let me know because i'm signing up i i will absolutely 100 percent i'll do it because that's that's really cool that's a really cool thing especially like if you got a home gym i have a home gym i don't need to go anywhere but yeah sometimes i get a brain fart and i'm like i don't know what i want to do today that's the thing man like people need you know sometimes just to have a little bit of direction say okay hey go this way you know, and it's cool because you can input all the the work at like you input all your data when you when you do it and it'll prompt you at the end. It's like, oh, you just lifted twenty three thousand pounds, you know. Uh, yeah. So and it gives you reminders. How did you sleep last night? How much water have you drank today? So it keeps you conscious of like the things that are important because, I mean, you know, nutrition, hydration and rest are, are important if you want your workouts to, to be maximized. Right. So Have you patented this? Uh, if you do, if you the, haven't do it because you're going to make a million bucks, things are in the process. <laughs> good, good for you. You're going to make a million dollars guaranteed. It's, uh, it's an amazing idea. Well, wait, wait, wait. Amazing idea. Good for you. Thank you. And Thank uh, you. is this going to be strictly like, are you going to have like a boxing side and then a weightlifting side or cardio? Or, well, it's, it's funny that you had, cause the lab integrated training, we try to give, uh, some of our workouts are boxing. Okay. Um, yeah, some of them are like CrossFit work style workouts. Some of them are, are strength and power. Some of them are just band work, just straight up band work, you know. Uh, so we give a little bit of mix. It depends on and depending on what you're looking for, we can send you programs to kind of match your goals and the direction that you want to go in. Yeah. 
I was, uh, I was going to say, because I like to hit the bag like three three to four times a week. And I was like, yeah. man, if I could get somebody that I could just log on, because I'm making it up on the fly, man. So, like, the buzzer goes. I, I only give myself 30-second rest in between rounds. So that, that 30 seconds, my mind's thinking about what I want to do. Now, if I could just have Brandon Brewer over there on the tablet say, hey, man, this is what we're doing, go. And we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the guidance is isn't. I mean, it 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 you, you can just focus on what's in front of you, you know. So I I hear you absolutely. That's I mean that's why we we did it because the the process like oh, what am I going to do today or what am I going to do next round? Like it, people don't they get frustrated yeah. and they just end up cutting the workout short or they just don't do them. So that's good. And, and where is the gym located? If there's people that want to sign up, how do they do that? Um, it's, it's right in Fredericton. Um, yeah. On, uh, Timothy Avenue on off the Hanwell road. Yeah. So it's like probably 10 minutes from downtown Fredericton. So five minutes from uptown. So yeah, we've got a great little location. You're yeah. over there in New Brunswick. Is that where you are? Yeah. Yeah. New Brunswick. Sorry. Yeah. Jeez. That's far. It's a weird, it is it's a three hour time difference, I guess. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> it is. I know. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, tucked away over on the east coast here, but uh, I've, it's I've, coast, coast. I've things. never been, but I've seen pictures. It looks wonderful. It is. I mean, like you know, I'm biased because I'm <laughs> from here, but uh, I've also got to travel all over, and you know, it. it um, I like the east coast because it's it's spread out as small as it is. You know, but things are spread out. There's so many trees. You know, the water, the ocean is like two hours away. Not even if I go south, and uh, it's it's easy to kind of stay grounded. Yeah. You know, um, but I did go to Jasper and Banff. I did the drive from Jasper to Banff a couple of years ago, and that was the most incredible. We don't have that in the East Coast, that's for sure. Really, you got you got some great scenery over there. It's heavily wooded, though, eh? A lot of trees. Yeah, a lot of trees. I'm from Ontario originally, and uh, there's a lot of trees in Ontario, but you go further east, it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, it does. We're trying to cut them down. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm guessing yeah. that's where the L-Jack comes from then. The L-Jack comes from, it was kind of a, it made sense because like my, okay, my my dad and my stepdad are both lumberjacks. Okay. Um and I went to school in Nackwick. Um, people can Google it, N-A-C-K-A-W-I-C. And it's a home of the world's largest axe. Um, yeah, Google it, I'm telling you. So, and when I was in grade one, that axe got put in there. And it's probably, I don't know, I'm not sure of the exact height, but it's probably like, I don't know, 80 feet high, maybe oh. we'll say. <laughs> And so, but the blade of the axe is a time capsule of all the work that my class did because it was put in there in grade one. So, like, I got a bunch of drawings that's in that axe capsule. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, yeah. You, you have a bunch of drawings in the world's largest axe. <laughs> yeah. Like, the blade of it is hollow, and we put all of our, we did, like, a big forestry project uh when it got put in and everything i think i drew a picture of my dad my stepdad like cutting trees down with a big chainsaw <laughs> great photo i was five so <laughs> I, i'm guessing that's the number one industry over in the, that that part of the country is probably going to be logging or some kind of logging and fishing yeah logging and fishing a lot of lobster fishing yeah i'm not yeah. A, i'm not a lobster guy man i had it once i didn't like it just lobster or all seafood? I had, I like fish, but yeah. um, I didn't mind crab. Lobster I wasn't a big fan of. Uh, it's also because um, I Googled what they eat, and they kind of eat shitty. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, oh. I can see that. They're just eating fish crap and... Like those, <laughs> no, I no. Why is it? Why does it taste good? But I didn't enjoy the taste of it either. I probably wrecked it for me, but um, it wasn't East Coast lobster. It was a West Coast thing. Yeah, you gotta come. We'll we'll get you hooked up on some good ones. Different yeah. different style of lobster out there. Uh, I think so. Like a little bit colder. I mean, I'm not sure what the Pacific's like, but I mean, you go like I've gone down lobster fishing a little bit 
south uh, yeah. down in the states uh, where the water is much warmer, um, and just they, they taste different. They do. They yeah. taste different. Um, which one's better? It's all kind of preference. Yeah, I think. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's the same thing. I, I'm a, I'm a hunter. Uh, I eat a lot of deer and stuff like that. And some people come over and I, I cook up a deer roast and like, oh, I don't like this. I'm I don't notice the taste anymore. Like, it's a gamey wild taste. But Do you like moose or deer? I like all of it. Um, if I have to pick, like my favorite's going to be elk. Elk is the nicest meat of all time. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a lie. Bison is really good too. But uh, yeah. if we're going to go uh, uh, moose or deer, I'd take a moose over a deer any day of the week. Really? Yeah. yeah. I like the game on the moose or on the deer. I don't know. A moose is good too, but I like the wild taste. I'm not sure. It's tough, yeah. man. I don't know. I, to be honest, I, I eat so much deer that I think I would miss it if I didn't have it. So, oh, I... you know, I'm like. This year yeah. we, we put five deer in the freezer and that's what my family eats all winter. Yeah. So we don't know no different. Yeah, well that that's good meat though. That's I mean that's that's good meat. We try to you know, we try to do the same. Uh you know, a lot of my friends go uh, give me all kinds of moose meat every year yeah. and I usually get my, my my picks of deer too. So I yeah, freezers freezers filled. So. Uh, I've had Rosicky on here a few times, and he's a uh, a very avid hunter, and he he's a little bit of a psychopath too. But uh... <laughs> he yeah, he loves the hunting. He does. He's been at me. I don't know. He's I was get down there, and we gotta go. I mean, I gotta get down there and and, and get out with him. Um, yeah, yeah, he loves it. <laughs> he's loves a, it. He's a wild man, dude. He's <laughs> I don't. Yeah. He's crazy, but he has a, a very thick accent compared to you. The, the Cape Breton accent is, uh, yeah, I, it, it is, it's thick. You know, one thing that I've noticed about myself is when I go back home, which is like 25 minutes away, not even. Yeah. And I start hanging out with like the people I grew up with, even my stepdad hang out with like a lot of the, <laughs> the guys working with. I come back completely <laughs> like, oh, completely got the twang going and, and, you know, it's, it's funny. It's, it's, I even catch myself when I talk to my brother on the phone. Uh, he still lives back home. I catch myself talking and my girlfriend be like, why are you saying things, you know, so much different. And I don't know, like it's, it's still in there, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I've lived in Fredericton for probably like 18 years. So I'm sure there's like slang words too, that you wouldn't normally use. <laughs> Definitely. There's gotta be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah food you ever you ever see food bar oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> similar some, some of them i have a couple of friends who uh they belong on that show for mm. sure <laughs> I, I when i'm talking to ryan i always felt like the like so the irish have pikeys or gypsies i always Gypsy. felt the, the the cape breton were the gypsies of the east coast i could see that yeah we got them they're, they're tacked up on the island there uh <laughs> and i have a lot of family down in cape breton in okay. sydney actually uh yeah cape breton is a beautiful place it is a beautiful beautiful place so if you do go to the east coast you should i mean new brunswick of course uh halifax is beautiful and uh and of course pei like i mean that's the beaches are unbelievable but uh, cape breton is a place on its own it's uh yeah it's beautiful Ryan's invited me out to go hunting a couple of times. I feel like I probably should do it because I have a, we'll get in trouble for sure. <laughs> I don't know. He's keeping pretty straight. He's got a little, uh, little girl on the way now. Yeah. Good for him. That's, uh, he's getting yeah. married. Yeah. He's getting married. He's got a, and I'm not sure how far along she is, but, uh, a little girl on the way long enough to know that, uh, it's a little girl. So I seen pictures um, the other day of her, her belly. She's getting big. So. It's got to be getting. It's got to be getting pretty close. We talked about the the pregnancy before his last fight. Yeah, yeah. It's it's good for Ryan, you know. Like, uh, I think uh, you know he, he's. I was talking to him the other day, and he's he's he seems like he's in a good place yeah. mentally, and and excited for September 11th. That's for sure, and excited to 
you know, for the little family that he's starting, you know, it's, uh, you know, growing up is a good thing. And, and, and even myself, like I have two step kids now, uh, yeah. uh, that I've, you know, I've been with Jen for going on three years now. It's to have kids in your life is, uh, it's a motivator. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a beautiful thing, you know, like it, sometimes it, you know, of course they're frustrating. All kids are challenging, but they make you, they make you a better person. You know, they really do. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I have two kids. They definitely change your life for the better. Um, if anybody were to tell me that children change your life for the worse, one, we're not friends. Yeah. And uh, two, you're just looking at the situation wrong. But I that's a pretty selfish way to look at it. You know? Yeah, man. That's a, it's a, I've heard it, though. That keep, people just don't want kids. But it, if you're not meant for it, you're not meant for it. But I know I was a crazy dude, man. I was doing all kinds of shit I shouldn't have been doing. Ended up in some places where I shouldn't have been. But uh, yeah. I've been married now almost eight years. I've been with Is that the, right? yeah. the, I've been yeah. with my wife for fourteen years total. Uh, we have a ten year old and a, a two year old. So and a two year old. Yeah. Nice. It's uh, boy it's, and girl or a grown boy. Yeah, I have uh, my oldest is a uh, girl and my youngest is the boy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. I first girl date that I had kids and. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful. Like it's a, it's been grateful because I was, you know, young and before boxing, I was, you know, boxing kind of gave me the, the boot and the, the ass that I needed. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and then, you know, when children and, and, a, and a good woman come into your life, uh, you know, it's, it's time to grow up and make sure <laughs> yeah. you got all the, you know, you you got your, in a row. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, how old are you now? Uh, 36. 36. So you're, I don't want to say exiting your prime. You're probably at the peak. I'm just getting into my prime, you okay. know, and I know that sounds crazy. Late uh, you know, I, well, I tell you, like, here's, okay, Bernard Hopkins and his prime until he's 36. That's true. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm Bernard Hopkins, uh, you know, I, but what I am saying, I am a man. Yeah. And, 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 and I know the way that I live myself my my life and people you know i don't drink i live clean i eat healthy like i i i do everything that i'm supposed to now and you know it's people can say throughout 36 is old but like you're basing that off of your opinion which has been created by people in, in that you saw yeah you know that you know like all, all your experience of the fighters that you've known and seen and da, 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 you know and and I and I get him, but there's a reason why Ricky Hatton isn't fighting, but Floyd still was. Yeah, you know, like the drinking and the partying, and uh, you know, and same thing with Bert Durant. These guys, you know, early mid thirties, they were they were done. <coughs> but like I I live clean. I don't you know I there's not a no stone unturned with me. You know okay. I. There's a there's a few there's a few outliers out there. Um, like if you go to MMA, Randy Couture didn't for take his first professional fight until he was 36, 34 or 36, one of the two of them. Is that that that's crazy? Right. That's crazy. With with the experience that he has as a pro, to know that he only started then, like that's it became that's crazy. Became the uh, the heavyweight world champion, then went down, did it at light heavyweight, then went back up and did it at heavyweight again. Who did he fight? Was it was it Pedro Rizzo? Do you remember? He fought Pedro Rizzo. Uh, he won this first belt from him, and then he won the second heavyweight title from Tim Sylvia. Tim Sylvia. He threw like the baseball overhand right. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, the the yeah. my my favorite Randy Couture moment is when he spanked Tito Ortiz's ass when Tito was in his prime, and Randy yeah. was considered old man. He had the friar tuck haircut and everything, but shredded. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he was a he was a machine. Yeah, and and and, and that close beating Lesnar. <laughs> that close, yeah. He was close. It, it was, was yeah it was close. Yeah, uh, we have a we have an outlier in Canada too. His name's Ryan Ford. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know Ryan. I mean, obviously, you know Ryan. I uh, I, spent I, a lot but, uh, I trained a little bit with Ryan up at the Grand Brothers in in Montreal. Yeah, and uh, a lot of a lot of time for the guy. He's you know 
all the respect to him. He's uh he's he's done it well. He's the definition of a fighter. Dude, he's an and, animal. <laughs> like, yeah, he is, man. That's the thing, and it doesn't matter where. He's no. an animal. Like he's uh and I admire that, you know, he's he's a he's a good representative for a sport. You know, he's a, a hustler, he, he 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 trains people, he he motivates people. Uh you know, I just uh, I think his young fella just had his first boxing fight. Second boxing uh, fight, a little RJ. Oh, second. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I like seeing that. You know, it's it's exciting because I mean, Ryan's dad, you know, was a yeah. was a pro, uh, and yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see. Uh, I know Ryan very well. We've done a lot of rounds. We've trained a lot together over the well for a few years straight. We did when he was doing MMA up at uh, Zuma Martial Arts. Uh, we were we were sparring partners a lot. But uh, I remember when his son was born, and he was so excited to be having a boy. And then just to see that kid who is a freak athlete too. Yeah, quite the soccer player too, I think. Oof. He plays in his own his own age category and then he plays up one too. Is that right? Yeah, he's not the kid's not screwing around. No. Hey, I mean he's watching his dad, he's gonna be a hard worker, so it's Yeah. Well my my point with Ryan is him and I are the same age. Oh, are you really? Okay. Yeah, he's 39 years old this year, and uh, okay. he looks every bit of 25. He does. Yeah, he does. He does, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how he does Stays it, man. The... Stays in the gym to sit. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, consistency. Consistency. I've seen, I've seen the guy break his arm, go get a cast, and then go to the gym the next day. <laughs> opportunity to work on the other arm i guess that's it i don't know that's he, it. i don't know how he does it he's like i blew my knee out i tried I, I blew my knee out i had knee surgery i had to take a week and stay home because i was higher than giraffe pussy on fucking painkillers <laughs> i was doing uh, a knee's a different i mean i'm not to <laughs> a knee's tough because i mean that's how you get around yeah you know but um i had uh I don't know if a lot of people don't know this, but I had that septoplasma pla- plasma yeah. surgery back in back in March, um, and I was I was I, not that it was like it wasn't painful, but I don't know if you know much about those. But like when you get a deviated septum, I, okay, story time. My sister hit me with a hockey stick when I was like ten years old, <laughs> and, and oh yeah, and I owe her one to this day. I owe her and and. Uh, she like I just I just got a brand new team of Solani uh hockey stick and I was I was so young that I was I was yeah probably about nine or ten and I was getting dressed at home, putting my shin uh sitting down on the living room floor, put my shin shin guards on, tape them up and she and I just got this new stick, so I c- cut it to length, but I never put tape on the end of it yet. And she's playing around, playing around, kinda of hitting me and I was like, put that down, put that down. She puts it down and like throws it and it comes right down and smashes me right in the nose and uh, didn't break my nose, but it was a mess. And uh, so it pushed the cartilage off. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know, but up until March this year, I had less than 5% breathing out of this right nostril. I couldn't breathe out of this right nostril at all. And that, and I'll tell you, like after it's hard you go 10 rounds the ninth guy in yeah. the world when you can't breathe through your nose like yeah, that's terrible it was horrible so you know back sparring now i got that surgery done and uh, it's it was a pain for a week like they they go up there they cut and they put these long stints yeah that are probably like that long in the bottom rooms here so you tell me where that thing's going i'm not sure and they're in there for a week and so i was Man, I just laid on the couch with my dog because I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't see. Like I couldn't breathe. It was horrible. But uh, sparring now and going for runs now, it's like I can't believe that people have been running around breathing like this with all this oxygen. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know? I've been able to breathe out of my nose for about ten years. I got, really? I got to go get it fixed. Yeah. I was uh, I was sparring with a gentleman named Connor Wood one time uh, back in the MMA days, and he put my nose on the side of my face. It probably looked like that. So I went and I got it put back in, let it like, set back, let it heal, 
Next day, back sparring, another gentleman named Tarek Gabali put it on the other side of my face. <laughs> so I just said it, and I left it, and I never fucked with it ever again. But I could like, yeah. smush it all the way, but I can't breathe out of it. Yeah. Is it is one better than the other, or both pretty? The right one's a little bit better than the left one, but it still sucks. Yeah. It just feels yeah. like I have a stuffy nose all the time, but there's nothing in there. Oh, man, I hear you. Half to sleep, your mouth open, like I oh, I saw fight, one. fight with my mouth open, like like I hear sometimes. You know, I was I've had a lot of different coaches. I one coach that I've stayed with, right off in the cloud, but you know, I've I, I've had a lot of different guys in my corner, and like yeah, close your mouth, close your mouth, and Aubrey just can't can't breathe <laughs> through his nose. <laughs> you know? And uh, if you don't get knocked out, you'll yeah, be suffocated, so right? It's a game changer, man. If you can get it fixed, I yeah. recommend it. I'm gonna I'm gonna look into it now because I don't plan on getting punched in the face not unless somebody offers me a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm telling you, like right down to my sleep, but my mood too. Cause I'm just really? I don't know, man. I, I for the first month after they took those splints out, I was high on oxygen. Like I could not breathe. I, I could not understand how everybody was run around like breathing with all this oxygen like it's crazy so i never knew any different you know from 10 years old i didn't pay attention to yeah. to it but so it, if you can get it fixed get it fixed i'm gonna look into it now i want to i want to be breathing like you i want to get high on oxygen oh it's great it's great <laughs> um let's talk about some uh i'm gonna have to ask you about um, boxing is in a weird state right now We've got, uh, we had COVID, it affected boxing, obviously, all over the world where everything was shut down for, for God knows how long. And then as we start getting fired back up, we get this, these entertainer boxers that want to compete in the sport. Now, I'll give you my thoughts on it. I'm good with it, as long as it's an exhibition yeah. and it's meant for entertainment. But once we involve Showtime and professional records, we have a problem. It's. You know, it's, I could argue both sides because I, I, I'm with you. Like I was, I was all like, you go one side. Okay. It's, it's got, we got NBA players. We got NFL players. We got YouTubers. We got the guys coming from the, the, the biggest organization, the UFC trying to jump over. Everybody wants to get in. We got celebrities. Everybody wants to box now. So for the sport, great. You know, it's all eyes on it. And I think boxing, you know, of course I'm biased. I love MMA, I do. But uh, it's a little too raw to have that, uh, to give make everybody really eager to want to do it. Yeah. Everybody wants to get in and, and you know, uh, and, and throw hands. Um, so I, I think the attention that it was getting from – viewers that weren't maybe paying attention yeah. that's good but it kind of is frustrating when you get these guys who dedicate their entire lives to it um they could be getting on that show or they could be like could be taking their opportunity maybe yeah. uh but then you could say well jake paul and woodley are creating opportunities for more guys to get on the show so i don't it's tough i don't uh the frustrating part to me is like to hear a whole bunch of YouTubers and people don't know a whole lot about boxing when they start saying, Oh, you know, I think he could, uh, you know, I think he's got, got a chance. I don't want to diminish anybody's dreams and say they can't do it, but don't you dare tell me that Jake Paul can give Canelo Alvarez a run for his money. And I mean, even the Floyd situation, like here's the thing people say, Oh, Floyd didn't look good. Floyd didn't want to look good. He didn't want to look good. Floyd want to come in, be safe, not look like a bully. He comes in and knocks Jake or Logan, whichever one it was, uh, Logan. Um, if he went in and blasted him <laughs> out in the first round or two, then he looks like a bully. Yeah. Looks like a complete bully. And he loses the opportunity to maybe potentially fight another YouTuber. It's all money, right? He wants the money. Like, and yeah, I mean, but then you get Manny Pacquiao, who's. <laughs> It's 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 a very weird spot because I've been asked like, hey, like if they called you on the phone, would you take the fight? Of course I would take the fight, but 
here's the kicker. I'm not going to reciprocate nice things. I'm going to take his fucking head off. Absolutely. <laughs> like, you think three years is going to be able to beat 25? I don't think so. <laughs> I'm going to blast this guy into the, into the next dimension. And But they know that. Yeah. <laughs> Like they're not they're not gonna go find a, a a Brian Caldwell type who's had four hundred amateur boxing fights. That guy will kill him. Yeah, exactly. That's I I hear you. They don't want Tyro. They Ben Askren, the worst Ugh. boxer in UFC history. Tyrone Woodley, who's punchy and past his prime, and just I don't know. I think Tyrone got uh, clearly a better shot than Ben <laughs> Askren, but. Uh, at the same time, too, I'll give Jake Paul uh, a wee bit of credit. Oh, just a wee <laughs> bit. Uh, I think he's putting the work in, um, you know, and I think he's got a good, uh, you know, like I, 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 I think he's got something to work with there, you know. I think he's got something to work with, but but let's be real. Against the title of Three years, I don't care if you got the best 10 coaches on the planet. You're not competing with a professional guy that's got four fights. No. His, no. his name could be Joe Blow. He's going to kill you. They won't. They And they won't. I mean, they're all about the, the money and the business, too. As soon as they take a, a fight against a guy like who is, you know, uh, they'll get exposed and the act is over. I also think Tyron Woodley will play ball. And by play ball, I I think it's a work. I don't think it's a real fight. Yeah, I I don't know. I hope it gets real. <laughs> I hope somebody I hope, real. I hope somebody gets clipped and then it get it gets turned on because Tyron Woodley's been at wild card gym for ten years. He can box. He can't, and you, the guy's an athlete. You know, oh, obviously, yeah. like he is a lid. You know a a solid athlete and it will be exciting to see what he brings to the table when he's solely focused on boxing, you know? So I hope Woodley wins. <laughs> well, uh, but, my, my biggest qualm with the whole thing is these guys keep calling out midgets. Like, yeah. We got what? Yeah. 155 pounders, 170 pounders. These guys walk around over 200 pounds. Yeah, the Paul, they're big boys. Like, I mean, this the legs on on Jake. I mean, Logan's tall, but Jake is he's a he's a thick dude. Pick a you know? pick a real cruiserweight. Listen, call yeah. up Ryan Rizicki, see what happens. That's the thing. They'll never will. And that's the frustrating part, you know. Call Ryan they, they, then the then they get exposed and they can't make the Oh the it, if this fight's real, somebody's getting exposed with the Tyron Woodley one. Tyron will knock him in the next week. He hits so hard. So hard. Mm -hmm. I really, yeah, that right, that right hand is, is heavy. I really hope he does. Like I'm, I'm praying he does, and I'm praying that I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, I will come right back on this show and apologize to everybody. Now, who did you have winning, Pacquiao or Spence? Ooh. <laughs> oh. I love Manny Pacquiao, but not Manny. <laughs> yeah. Earl Spence is too good, man. It's too young. Manny pa Manny's still got it. He's still got something, but it's not yeah. Earl Spence something. It would be interesting. <laughs> I want Manny. I'm a Manny guy. So I, I, but Earl Spence, like the, 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 the size, the – you know he's he's durable. He's and he and he's got he can punch the entire fight. That's a long fight for for a guy whose legs get tired. Yeah, I don't know. Man, he's I don't know. I don't. Yeah, eventually, man, he's got to slow down. The the sport of boxing needs Earl Spence to win. We can't keep regurgitating the same guys that are forty years old over and over and over and over again. Because at some point, it might not be today, it might not be tomorrow, but there's going to be a stop. And we haven't built another star. Well, they, they, all these guys are so afraid. Like the Charlos, like between, you know, Charlos, Canelo, Benavitez, Plant, Andrade, like, man, it's just somebody fight somebody. Yeah. I, I get it. I get it. We got, we got Canelo, we got 
Villager Saunders, which was awesome, you know. Uh, but like, man, like these these guys gotta they gotta <laughs> fight each other, you know. They need to fight each other because, uh, like you said, we can't keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and just keep riding on like Manny or Floyd's uh, exhibition fights, you know, uh, or Wilder and Fury. That, know, one, like it's, that one makes me mad because the the wilder uh the wilder fury fight shouldn't be happening no it shouldn't it shouldn't and it, what happens if yusuf beats joshua oh and it's it's a reality it could happen then it's like what this it just it's it's too big of a wrench now do i think joshua will beat yusuf probably he he should yeah. he should you know uh but man, I want to see Fury and Joshua. Uh, the Fury Joshua fight needs to happen because we need to have an undisputed king. Like we need, we, like, we do. We have the lineal champion who is the real champion. Like let's make no mistake about it. Tyson Fury is the world champion. He's hands down the best guy on the planet right now at the heavyweight division. Very yeah. close second is Anthony Joshua. I agree. Who has yeah. more, who has more belts? Yeah. So the- yeah, I wish Wilder. I just wish Wilder would have been a man and just swallowed his pride and just like stopped making excuses and just been like, you know what, you beat me fair and square. Uh, we'll be back. And uh, I don't know. It's frustrating to see him make all you know, even throw Mark Breland under the bus. Like <laughs> it, it was just weird. It was just weird. <laughs> well, yeah. let's let's be realistic though. On what planet does Deontay Wilder think he's going to do better? After he got beat in two fights, he literally got beat in two fights. He lost both. Mm. He did absolutely. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. Like when Tyson Fury sits up in the twelfth round, like the Undertaker, and goes and beats your ass for the remainder of that round, you sir lost exactly. that fight. You're absolutely right. The fact that like he dr- dropped him, and as soon as his eyes like woke up and sat up, he was fine. Fine. He was good. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to see the fight. Am I going to watch it? 100% because I think it's over in four rounds. I didn't want to watch Jake Paul and Ben Askren, but I did. <laughs> I watched <laughs> so highlights. Course, you know, so of course I'll watch the third one. I, you got it. You got it. I'll watch the Tyron Woodley fight with Jake Paul. I didn't watch the Ben Askren one because I seen the weigh-in pictures and I was like, holy fuck, I've seen a bag of milk with more muscles than that guy. I thought that we might see some form of a athlete come out of it you know because obviously Askren's got his accolades with with wrestling but uh <laughs> we saw none of that What's wrong? He, he retired from combat sports they called him out gave him a couple months to try to get ready he went yeah. to wild card gym one time or whatever it was hit some mitts and so it's like fuck it i'm getting paid four million dollars to show up yeah <laughs> yeah that's one that's one thing that I, I i like a little bit about mma where you get the the win bonus yeah you know a little bit you know yeah is what it is but he left out of the arena that night smiling with his wife she was happy too she knows she's going to sax tomorrow to get some fucking purses and shit yeah <laughs> whatever <Absolutely. laughs> whatever yeah you got, you. you got clipped on national tv they gave you a, a couple million dollar check you go home you kiss your wife you do some weird stuff and you get up and you you keep on keeping on yeah, but I mean, come on. What about like the thought of what happens if I win? Then I get another one of those checks. I don't. I mean, when you're done, you're done. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Right. How, how many more times has Ben Askren got to get punched in the face? <laughs> you got need in the next Tuesday by Masvidal. <laughs> yeah. Robbie Lawler was kicking his ass until something weird happened. Like, yeah. So, is is Nick Diaz and Lawler fighting? Yes, they are. That's an okay. amazing throwback fight, too. Yeah, I man, I, I I've been waiting so long for Diaz to come back. I, mean, I think we all have, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, the greatest guys in the history of the sport, man. Great personality. Oh, yeah. um, 
just did whatever he wanted, took fights whenever he wanted, left when he wanted, came back when he wanted, and now he's coming back against one of the best 170 pounders to ever do it. Yeah. Yeah. You think you think Lawler beats him, or do you think Diaz is going to get him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to see Robbie Lawler take it because he, he lost the first one, and I'm a huge Robbie Lawler fan. I like Lawler, too. Yeah. He's, uh, he's... But I want, I want Diaz to win, only because I think that his whole suspension was ridiculous. Yeah. And, I mean, but I like both guys. Uh, I'd like yeah. to see Robbie Lawler win because if Robbie Lawler wins, there's only one way he wins, and that's by sending Nick Diaz's head into the stratosphere. It's true. And, yeah. And he's got the power to do it. I mean, if Lawler wins, then they're one and one, so maybe they can do it again. So I, I have a, I have a place in my heart for Robbie Lawler because of the Rory McDonald fight. It's one of the greatest fights I've ever seen. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think the the Nick Diaz fight will probably be his last fight, and I'd like to see him go out on a W. And I hate it yeah. when guys leave the sport and they they go out on like three losses in a row. It sucks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You kind of want to be able to go out in your own terms. Yeah, you know, on on in a good positive note. You get the guys who end up fighting way past their prime because they're trying to get to that, exactly. and they never can. Yeah. I told you I would have this wrapped up by midnight. It is past midnight there. It's quarter after 12. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I will give you the floor for two minutes. You've got uh, a message you want to send to Mr. Wilcox, uh, sponsors to thank and all that kind of stuff. It's all you. Go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, sponsors. We'll start with the sponsors. Uh, Andy Fox at the Waterfront Pub and Notebook has been an absolute blessing um, to my team. Uh uh, the lab and Jabrady training, you know, to be able to have and, and live in a gym if I want to all day, every day, and uh, to be able to do my real estate. Uh, I have a good partner who is uh, just absolutely fantastic. Um, I have a tremendous team. I work uh, um, side by side with the uh, with the guys at Max Health. Um, they have physio, chiro, acupuncture, osteopath. They got everything. You know, they they, they help me keep my body in check. Um, which has been important, you know, if you want to do things right, like I said, uh, you, you got to check all the boxes, make sure you're living, living the right way. Um, and, you know, message for Jesse. Um, be ready, you know, uh, because the guy that you think is coming is not coming, you know completely different animals coming this time and uh i think we're gonna steal the show um all the respect to him his dad his whole team uh but uh it's not gonna be enough not for me so uh bring your best the best man will win and uh yeah hopefully uh we have a nice safe training camp and uh we both come out healthy uh after the fight so it'll be good Listen, man, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Um, we should have done this a couple of years ago, but I'm glad I did it for this one. Uh, best of luck in the fight. I was asked uh, probably 15 times to make a prediction. I will not do that. Um, I will be doing that with Dan. But, but, you, but you did say that you're going to make it before the fight. I will make it before the fight when I have Dan Otter on and we go over the fight card. <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> but I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you're a blessing to the whole combat sports industry, uh, not only in Canada, but just North America. Like, it's uh, you're doing a good thing, and uh, we really, really, really appreciate it. So keep up the good work, man, and, and thank you. Thank you very much. We'll wrap it up at that, guys. That's the final shot.